All right, and we're live. Good Monday morning to everybody. I hope you had an amazing weekend. It was Halloween. I'm really excited to bring Nadine Joy forward as one of our members of Lead Up for Women and talk about purpose. Today, we're going to be talking about living on purpose. What is your purpose? Everything that has to do with purpose. But first, I just want to say, I've heard on the radio this morning as I was driving and I'm never in my car driving. I just happened to take my car into the dealership this morning. And I was shocked at the radio was talking all about how no kids were out. No one came to their houses. My neighborhood was popping. Let me just say that we all ran out of candy by eight o'clock. The kids were out at 530. The ha I mean, there were families everywhere. There were coming out and it was just so nice to see my neighborhood with everybody out and enjoying life and the kids were having a good time and we could celebrate Halloween. And yes, it was a beautiful weekend because of that. It was fun to see the kids have a good time. There was music. So many people were just so happy to be out and celebrate. And I mean, that's what life's all about, right? I feel like we've been locked in too long. So it was a very exciting weekend for me and we would love to hear your comments on how great of a weekend it was for you. And uh, let's go ahead and get to Nadine Joy since we only have a few minutes this morning. So Nadine, welcome to your Member Monday Spotlight. Thank you so much, Colleen. It's so fabulous to be here. And I love what you said about Halloween. That was exactly what happened with us. There was all of a sudden, I think it was around six o'clock where we started getting kids and it was just packed. Like they had, and the kids had so much fun. So we were just so grateful for that experience, right? That we actually yes. got to go out and, and have that with them. So thanks again for, for having me here today. Yes, absolutely. You know, I say we shouldn't live in scarcity. Yes. Should we be responsible? Of course. I mean, we've had the flu circulating for years, right? We've all had to be responsible for with our health and for our health. And of course, we still have to be responsible. But um, it was just, you know, we never know what tomorrow is going to bring. And so you really have to live for today. That's what we have. And I love that we're talking about purpose because so many of us settle for, I did for many, many, many years. So I know the difference between settling with what you think you have to do versus living in your purpose. So Nadine, I'd love for you to talk about the book you wrote and why purpose is so important to you and what your message is today. Absolutely. So I also too can relate to not necessarily living with purpose because I was a geologist for over a decade and not necessarily helping anybody, which I came to know from getting very sick and almost dying that this was my purpose was to help people make a difference in the world, to bring love and light. And my name, even Nadine means hope. And my middle name is Joy. So most people always say, oh my gosh, your last name is Joy, but it's actually my middle name. And it's intentionally brought forward as my brand because I really feel like hope and joy and purpose are the reason why I'm here is to share that message with others. So I, again, I lived many years without living my purpose. And I think it's something now, especially even more than ever before in our history is so important to, you know, live every day, live each day, every moment with purpose, focusing on the things that matter. So I always like to say there's not necessarily just one purpose to your life. Uh, we all, I, I always like to say, you know, let's, let's live our lives with meaningful purpose, purpose each and every day. How can we bring certain things into our life that create meaning for ourselves and others? And some of the things I talk about in my book, you know, there's three, three steps to uncovering your purpose or living your life with greater meaningful purpose. And one of them is doing things that you love with greater passion and joy. One of them is, you know, speaking to other people, what do they say to you? You know, what are the things you're good at? And then the third, one is, you know, bringing something into your life that is of service to others and giving back to some, uh, you know, whether that's charity work, whether that's through your church, you know, whatever that looks like, just giving back in some way, shape or form and helping humanity, be having that humanitarian spirit inside of you and, and giving back. So when you bring all three of those together, it's a very powerful message, not only for yourself and fulfilling for yourself, but to others. And then it creates this meaningful uh, fulfillment within you and also in others, which creates a balanced, loving relationship with you and the other people that you're around, whether that's your, you know, colleagues, your business colleagues, your family, your friends, your spouse, acquaintances, people that you've just met at the grocery store. It can You can take this concept basically anywhere you go. Yeah, that's beautiful because we have a choice and that's the way I like to see it, right? We have choices 
So we choose to uh, move forward with how we live our lives. So we choose to be in joy, we choose to be happy, um, or we can start our day and we can choose to uh, be miserable. We can choose, <laughs> there's a lot of choices we get to make. And, you know, I, it's, it's something very near and dear to my heart, Nadine, because we truly live in, the, in, in our own uh, creation of what, you know, what is surrounding us, who is surrounding us, what we allow into our lives, what we've created for our lives and the, the life that we live today. And I always say to people, if you're not happy with your life, then change it. And I know that seems so abrupt and, you know, so matter of fact. And for many people, um, you know, that's, it's, it's a bigger struggle than others. But with surrounding yourself with people that believe in you and surrounding yourself with people that also believe in your purpose um, or believe in you specifically to be able to um, see out what that is in service that you want to be able to do and have similar interests of you. It fuels you rather than sucks the energy from you. We need to not surround ourselves with energy suckers. I'm just going to throw it out there because it's exhausting. It's yes, absolutely. And I actually have a term for that. So I, I've termed those, you said energy suckers. I've actually called them energy vampires because that's how it <laughs> felt like to me. It's like, yeah. you literally get drained of your energy and you're like, all of a sudden, like, why am I so tired all of a sudden? And for years I went around thinking, oh my gosh, I'm just exhausted all the time. And I didn't realize it was because of, you know, certain people that I was surrounding myself with, not realizing that constantly they were feeding off of my energy, off of my light, off of who I was. And I was like, I didn't even realize that I was giving, 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 and yeah. not allowing boundaries to be set between me and these other people, right? I think right now is very yeah. important with the news and the media and all the fear that's out there. So can I, I want to actually share something. Uh, this isn't in my book, but it's something that I just came from the other day. So there's so much fear right now in the world. And I don't even like mentioning fear because it brings fear into mm -hmm. us. But something I heard the other day that I was listening to, and I thought it was really worth mentioning today to all of your leader, your, your re readers and listeners here today. Um, so another acronym. So we've all heard the, the acronym for fear is like facing everything and, and uh, sorry, what is the one? So the one I was going to say was facing everything and rising. So I can't even remember what the other one used to be because this one's been embedded in my brain. And right. I love that. Like, let's let go of our past, all the things from our past that no longer serves us and step into the light and boldly and courageously move forward each and every day towards that and rise up as leaders, as moms, as, you know, family people, as friends, mm -hmm. as teachers, whatever that is, whatever that looks like for you. Yeah. I love that. So face the fears and uh, distinguish them, let go of things that no longer serve you. And, you know, how, what are the steps? So let's talk about your book for a second. Um, do you go into detail in your book, Nadine, about steps that people can take uh, in finding their purpose and living within their purpose? What are some tips you can give uh, the ladies that are listening today that they can apply today into uh, their journey and in, in really ensuring that they're living their purpose and that they're happy? Yeah. So I actually, there's 11 chapters. It's only, it's a book you can read in a day. It's 85 pages. It's not a long book. It's not a hard read. And every chapter has basically exercises you can go through, but it kind of starts out like the first chapter we talk a lot about, like what I was just mentioning, you know, letting go of your past and all that no longer serves you. That's just the, always the first step in creating where awareness around, you know, how our past does show up in our life and how it might be actually blocking you. So sometimes it's like, there might be this barrier between you and your purpose that you might not even recognize is there. So creating an awareness around how your past might be keeping you stuck from, you know, getting to that level or the area in your life where you want to be. So that's, that's the first step. I always say it's awareness and then letting go of your past, all the things that no longer serve you, all the things that have been there that you've been holding on to, that you've been repressing, that have been making you feel stuck and sad and bitterness and anger, like just bringing in forgiveness for yourself for all other people who have hurt you, who have done things in our, in our past. Like that is definitely, that alone can change your life. And then like, there's many other steps we go through, um, like how to like surround yourself. For example, we have our whole heard this, you know, 
the saying like whoever you surround yourself with the top four people is who you you become yourself and surrounding by you know, yourself with other people who have already done or are already doing what you desire is very very empowering towards your purpose because you see firsthand in reality in real life it's no longer just a dream in your mind it now becomes something that you see somebody else is doing it might not be the same purpose as yours but just seeing somebody else living their purpose and seeing the joy and the fulfillment and all of the amazing things that come with it is so, so powerful for us as women to step into that again, now more than ever. It's, it's, yeah, there's so many, there's so many tips. I'm just trying to talk so quick because there's so much I want to share, but I would say those would probably be the two things. And then opening your heart to receive lots of times we block our heart. So I always see our heart as like the front part of our heart is where we receive um, the back part, sorry, the front part of our heart is where we give the back part of our heart is where we receive. And most of us as women have the back part of our hearts blocked off because we're so open in society, families, you know, give, 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 especially as women, as moms, like we're constantly giving, but I'm encouraging each and every one of you ladies today listening to open your heart to receive, because there are so many blessings and so many wonderful things here that are awaiting you and including your purpose and living life with meaningful purpose and letting go of those things from your past so I encourage you to open your heart and just receive that right here in this moment sorry I muted myself there was some sound over here I love that that's beautiful mm -hmm. and uh and I would even encourage you to go one step for you know further with that and write down what are those things that you really could use from others in your life um, that you're missing out on, you know, would you need an extra hug or two a day or a kiss from your spouse or a phone call from a family member or, you know, uh, words of affirmation or what is it that you're really needing in your life and write those down. And then as you receive those, you know, mark them off and see how in your gratitude because of your service and, you know, you are needing this stuff as well and, and having those conversations with others. And let's not be quiet about it either, I say, Nadine. So if there's something that you're needing, especially from your children or your spouse or someone that you work with, be vocal about it. And it, it's okay to ask for the things that we need uh, instead of being quiet about it and either feeling we don't deserve it or we're not worthy of it, um, or it's just rude to ask for it because it's not. It's not rude to ask for the things we want and go after what it is that we want in our lives to fulfill us because you only have today. It'll never be here again because tomorrow won't ever be today again. So like I said, we don't know how much time we have left or, you know, what's going to happen in the world in the, you know, the next few days. So, you know, live for the moment and uh, choose joy, you know, choose oh. purpose and choose joy. Exactly. And I love yeah. that. And this is actually the year of the voice. So 2020, I don't know if you've heard this before, but actually represents like clear vision, right? Clear mm -hmm. vision and also opening your voice, expanding your voice to speak your truth and be authentically and vulnerably, you know, who you really wow. are inside of you and allowing that to come through out into others and sharing that with others, sharing your gifts, sharing the things, sharing your story, even just sharing your story with somebody can have the power to change their life or even save their life. I've had I have so many stories right now that I could tell, you know, certain times and follow you in your intuition that you have. Follow that gut instinct because sometimes you have no idea why things are coming up, but if they're coming up for a reason and specifically around things that you would normally not think of yourself, you know that they are coming from something from God, from the, you know, some something outside of you and you need to take action and you need to listen to that. So there's a couple of stories uh, one of them, you know, this is right when I started coaching, I had an inclination, I was on Facebook, saw somebody post something or a name. And right away, I was like, Oh, my gosh, I don't know who this person is, but I need to reach out to them. Anyways, long story short, I, I sent them a message saying, Hi, how are you? How are you going? I just literally was guided. I'm sorry for reaching out. I don't know you, but I was guided to reach out. How can I support you right now? I just feel like I needed to reach out to you. And it was funny because they emailed back right away saying that they were actually praying in that moment that somebody would come into their life because they were in such a dark place. And I didn't find out for two years later that they were actually on the verge of committing suicide in that moment. So it literally saved their life from reaching out to them. So I just wanna encourage you that, you know, whatever that is, just listen to yourself, follow your intuition, follow that gut instinct that you have. 
And we can't hear if we're too busy doing. So that's the other thing. We need to step back and listen and create some space for us to get those promptings, to reach out to those that and follow what those promptings are. We, we don't have to rationalize it. Just do it. And then you learn later what the reason was for. So Absolutely. Nadine, thank you so much. What wonderful, juicy tidbits of um, action and uh, knowledge that we have today to move forward. So thank you, Nadine, for being with us. And do you wanna show everybody your book? Do you have the, your previous book with you? Um, so you can show everyone where they can get it. And of course, if you can put that in the comment section. Sure, so this is the book, uh, Uncover Your Purpose, Heal and Share Your Gifts with the World. So I do have it on my website, nadinejoy.com. And also you can get it on Amazon, but I actually wanted to extend um, out to all your listeners today, just a special bonus. And I, I've never done this before and Colleen doesn't even know. So it's a surprise for her today. <laughs> um, so I'm actually wanting to send anybody who wants a hard copy of my book and I'm willing to sign and create some type of personalized, inspirational, purposeful, purposeful message for each and every one of you today. So if you're interested in that, just reach out to me and I'd love to send you a signed copy of my book. All right, ladies, you heard it. So make sure you reach out to Nadine and she'll get you a copy um, and I have to go look, did I ever get a copy of that book? Because if I didn't, I want one. So <laughs> I will, I'm, you'll be I'm already raising my hand. I want one for sure. <laughs> That's great. You're first on my list, Colleen, for sure. Thanks, Nadine. All right, you guys have a beautiful week. And don't forget to uh, write down what it is that you want. Don't be afraid to step into joy and, and you know, really surround yourself with those people that uh, fuel you and aren't your vampire suckers that take all your energy from you. So thank you, Nadine, for being with us today. Bye, everybody.